Hey everybody, I'm back again and we're going to get through my peas if it's the last thing I do. <laughs> it won't be the last thing I do, but yeah. Start off with Pacific Rim. Got this last Black Friday 2013. Black Friday 2013 for about 8 bucks. And damn good deal because Pacific Rim is freaking awesome. And yes, it has the nice uh, lenticular cover. So... Yeah. Next up, Pandorum. Got it from Target for four bucks a while back. Great movie, great sci-fi. Love it. I don't know what else to say about it. I, I didn't at first. I didn't know. I didn't really like it, but then I watched it again and I had more of an appreciation for it. And yeah, Pandorum. Next up, Paranormal Activity One. Wait for it. Wait for it. Paranormal Activity 2, wait, 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 3, and, just with the lenticular cover, Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones. I do not have number 4 because I didn't need it to watch all of them uh, with a friend of mine or anything, and because I didn't want to pay exorbitant prices for the fourth one when it was... When I was looking to buy them, it was the most expensive one, and I didn't want to spend all that much money on it. So, like, no, four isn't necessarily a bad one. It's just, like, you know, I don't want to spend 15 bucks on a movie that's worth maybe five or ten. No offense, I'm just saying, you know. Um, but, yeah, I, I like the Paranormal Activity series. A lot of people don't like it, but I think it's awesome. I think they're on the right track. And I love that it's a, a horror movie franchise where each sequel uh, has something to do with the past movies and they're all part of this interconnected story, which you really do not see a whole lot of in horror movie franchises. You see a lot of uh, attempts to break the mold and break from the tradition of the series and do something completely different, which sometimes works out and is pretty cool. But at other times, it's just like, why didn't you just stay true to the original series? And usually it's just like, you know, one movie has very little to do with the other. Whereas the Paranormal Activity movies tie directly in with one another. Directly. I love that kind of stuff. And I love that it's started to gain a foothold in Hollywood thanks to Paranormal Activity. And... I don't know. I like the found footage genre. A lot of people don't like it. I like it. I don't get what all the hate for the found footage genre is. Next up we have Paul. This glorious steelbook of Paul, which cost me, I believe, um, four dollars. Black Friday 2013. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of this, but for four dollars, the steelbook version, I was like, all right, yeah, I'll do that because uh, it's good enough that it was warrant it, it warranted picking it up for four dollars, obviously, especially with the steelbook. And I love, uh, you know, I love alien movies. I love Spielberg alien type stuff, <coughs> and this movie has a particular scene that kind of makes fun of Spielberg's obsession with aliens, and. I don't know. I like it. I like it. It's got a whole uh, X-Files feel to it. And it's just this... Uh, oh, what's the word I'm thinking of? P. P something. Funny, I'm doing the P movies here in my collection. But yes. Uh, parody. It's a parody of all the, uh, you know, classic alien sci-fi movies out there. Next up we have... Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Sorry, I'm a little tired. But, uh, yes, this is a great movie. Uh, I have a lot of fond memories of this and quote it frequently. <laughs> it's one of those endlessly quotable movies, so of course i got to have it in my collection. Pee-wee Herman. I grew up watching Pee-wee Herman. I loved him. I loved watching uh, Pee-wee's Playhouse on Saturday mornings. And what, what can I say? I mean, my brother can attest to that. I loved watching Pee-wee when I was younger. And not ashamed. 
Some people might be, but I'm not ashamed. Next up we have the Pirates of the Caribbean Trilogy. This only has the first three movies. Watched the fourth one. Didn't really care for the fourth one. Uh, I might give the fifth one a try when it comes out, but I just kind of feel like they should have cut it off at three. I really liked the third movie, actually. I felt like it was just over the top. They went in all these different directions, and sometimes I love movies like that. Sometimes I love when a movie does that. And I felt like that was exactly what you need from an adventure film. And that's the thing. It's an adventure film. You've got to go all over the place. You can't tell me you're watching Indiana Jones movie and it's an adventure film and he goes all over the place and he does all kinds of crazy stunts. And you're telling me that's a classic. That's a brilliant film. That's a, an amazing series of films. But Pirates of the Caribbean, which tries to do adventure as well, and goes in all these different places and does all these crazy different things. That's just, you know, unacceptable. We can't do that. No, it's too much. You're just a pirate hater. <laughs> I know. Um, I feel like this is a, one of Johnny Depp's greatest roles. And, uh, yeah, fantastic movie. Fantastic uh, sound, uh, score. Uh, and great adventure series. I like adventure movies, so... I was really surprised when they did those, too, because I, uh, you know, growing up, I didn't know that much about Pirates of the Caribbean. I had, I did go on, I remember going on the uh, ride at Disneyland in the 90s uh, once, the original, I believe it was the original uh, Pirates of the Caribbean ride. So I kind of cherished that memory a little bit. But, um, yeah, uh, I've... I didn't really know much about Pirates of the Caribbean or anything like that, or, or Pirates at all. So when they said they were going to make a movie series out of it, I just I didn't think it was going to be very good. I didn't know what it was going to be about. It didn't, eh. it didn't appeal to me immediately. But then I actually saw the movies, and I liked them. What can I say? Next up, we have Planes, Trains, and Automobiles with what I can confirm to be a just terrible transfer but I also only paid four dollars and 88 cents for it so I can't complain too much I have as you know from the DVD collection overview I have the DVD version of this but for 488 I couldn't pass up the blu-ray just like well there I have it in high definition <laughs> um, next up we have planet of the planet of the Apes. I'm a little too tired or something. Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes. <sighs> okay, point. <laughs> um, yes, uh, I never really got around to watching the other Planet of the Apes movies, so I didn't know which ones I liked. I probably should have just picked up the, you know, the whole set it frequently goes on sale. But, um, Regardless, this is the one I knew I wanted, was the original one. Uh, a lot of great classic moments in this movie. Uh, absolutely love it, and I'm fall I'm falling in love with all the, uh, the new Planet of the Apes movies coming out. So, yeah. Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes. Anyway, um, next up, Poltergeist. This is one of my favorite movies of all time, and it's probably my favorite horror movie of all time. Uh, it is exactly what I look for from a horror-slash-thriller movie. And, um, yeah, because uh, this was originally when it came out PG, of course... It was during that time when PG was a lot harder of a P, of a rating, like a lot more hard hitting than, you know, it is now. You know, you could expect to find a movie with a few cuss words or whatever in it, a, a PG rating. Uh, you could expect to find a movie like this that is scary as hell at a PG rating. So yeah, um, freaky deaky movie. 
and I absolutely love it, and it's a pretty nice steelbook, schnazzy. You open it up, and it's got the TV uh, fuzz, as it were, and uh, the booklet inside and all that. I got it mainly because it was uh, Poltergeist, but yeah. Next up, we have another favorite of mine, one I used to stay home from school to watch. When I, I mean, there was literally a time when I saw it, I woke up, I turned on the TV, I saw that this was on, and I said, forget going to school, I'm watching this today. Poseidon Adventure, this is one of my favorite disaster movies, one of my favorite, uh, you know, kind of adventurous movies, uh, especially of the era, and I really, like, Whenever I saw it on TV, it was just like one of those things. I had to stop and start watching it. It just sucked me in. Uh, I love this movie. It's great. I believe I picked it up for like four bucks on Black Friday 2013. So, yeah. Not bad. Not bad. When I picked up for Black Friday this year for four bucks... Princess Bride. The Princess Bride. Can you believe I have not seen this movie yet? It's true. I have not seen this movie yet. I told uh, my friend Sean, and he said, You're, how is that even possible? And I don't know. I just never got around to it. And um, the thing is, I know a lot of the quotes from it and everything, and I'm, I've seen a lot of the clips or whatnot of some of the main moments in the movie, but I've never actually seen the movie. So when I saw it for four bucks, I was like, yeah, I, I gotta get it. And now I have it on Blu-ray, so I can watch it with my friends. Next up is the movie that introduced me to Studio Ghibli and to Joe Hisaishi and to um, Hayao Miyazaki and, you know, this... It, this entire style of animation, you know, it, it, and it, and it, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, your first one you love the most kind of thing. It's the same from, it's, it's, that's what it is for me with Princess Mononoke. Not just that, I think it's honestly some of Miyazaki's best work, but, um, yeah, I, I don't deny that I probably have an affinity for this one more than for other Miyazaki movies simply because it was the first one I ever saw. But that being said, it's just an amazing movie and I actually try to live by the morals and the standards in this movie because uh, I believe in the concept of uh, seeing with eyes unclouded by hate, as they say in the movie. And I try to do that. I strive to do that every freaking day. And Well, sometimes I mess up and sometimes I get it right, but yeah. Uh, anyway, this is just a man magnificent Blu-ray release. If you haven't actually uh, picked it up yet, you definitely should. Uh, because the transfer is just absolutely gorgeous. It looks better than it ever did before. And um, I don't know if any of you have like, the older DVD release that has macro blocking freaking everywhere in every dark scene. But you know, whatever like that... At the very beginning of the movie, when that, like, uh, boar monster god thing comes up and has the wriggling, like, black stuff all over him, you see the macro blocking. That is, like, the perfect example of macro blocking, what that actually is. You see all these, like, little dots, of the, and it just it doesn't actually properly animate the movie that you're seeing on screen and you can't even tell what the hell is going on. All of that mess is gone in the Blu-ray release in high definition. So yes, if you like this movie, you owe it to yourself to pick up the Blu-ray and God help you if you say that DVD is good enough. Just fuck you. Anyway. Next up, we have the 3D 4-disc edition of... Actually, is it 4 or 5? Yeah, 4-disc edition of Prometheus. I believe we got it one year for 15 bucks the year it came out. 
and um, yes, it's the collector's edition that comes with the four-hour documentary about the movie, and that's why I wanted to get it. And I really love Prometheus. It's a really great movie that was underrated, and people were complaining because it made them think too much, and I'm just like, you're complaining that a movie made you think, but that's what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Um, anyways, the battery's running out, so I'm going to have to hurry this one up. Uh, moving on to the proposition. The proposition is one of my favorite westerns, and my favorite newer westerns out there. This one takes place in Australia, and it's just fucking great. If you haven't seen it yet, you definitely owe it to yourself to check it out. Next up is Psycho. Uh, if you haven't seen Psycho yet, then what the hell is wrong with you? It's a Hitchcock classic. It's one of the greatest Hitchcock movies out there. And this particular Blu-ray is a magnificent transfer with a really well done um, audio. So to the point where I, when I was watching it, it's raining outside in the movie. The rain literally sounded like it was all around me. It literally sounded like it was actually real rain. So, like, yeah, the sound mix on this one is freaking fantastic. Which is great for a horror movie. Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction is, of course, a modern classic. And I picked this one up for $4, 2013 Black Friday. How can you not have Pulp Fiction? Can you describe Marcellus Wallace for me? The Punisher. I haven't seen this one yet, and I also haven't seen Punisher Warzone, which is why I picked both of them up off of Go Hastings for a pretty low price, honestly, so just so that I could watch them because my friends said that I should check them out. So yes, there we go. We are finally done with the P section. And as you can tell, it's a pretty big stack. In fact, I counted it was 23 movies. So, yeah. <sighs> Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Peace. I do the peace sign over here, but there's no room. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.